how quick can we bring up a window, preview some content, make a selection and get back to what we were doing? Well, the opposite question might be, is something too quick? In this video, I'll show you one technique that you may miss if you blink. Well, maybe not. It's not that quick unless you blink really slowly. But anyway, let's get to it. So a few weeks back, somebody made a feature request for the bookmarks tool that I have in the Unity Asset Store. It was to make the selecting of a bookmark super quick by utilizing the same sort of method as the Alt Tab system on Windows. Now, if you're not familiar with this system, here is a short preview of in action. The question is, could we recreate this in Unity? Well, I wouldn't have made this video if we couldn't, so let's get to it. Let's look at it in action using the Scene View Bookmarks tool. Here, I use Alt B, and while I'm holding that Alt key down, I keep pressing B to skip through the various bookmarks till I find the one I like, and then I release the Alt key to select it. There's no buttons to select with the mouse and not even a menu to pull up the window itself. Now this new feature just went live on the bookmarks tool and I'll leave a link in the description so you can grab it for yourself. And as a side note, I do read the comment sections. So let me know what extensions or previous videos on the tools I create here, you would like to see me release in the asset store. I basically want to build out my store more by the end of the year. For this video though, let's get through the window opening and tab-like operation. So let's get coding. So in the class, we have quick selection window, which derives from editor window. And that has a static method that's going to call it up. And usually here you would see me come in and write menu item and then start putting the menu item with a shortcut key that we've seen in the example so far. But if you watched my previous window, you can see that we can actually instead use shortcut here, which is basically gets rid of the thing being in a menu and just gives you the ability to use a shortcut. Now the naming convention we're going to use here is we're just going to take the class and I'm going to put in show because that's the kind of method name we're using. Now we want to put in what key code we want. Now I have the scene view bookmarks tool installed in this project, so I can't use B, so I'm going to use G. And we know that we need the shortcuts here and the shortcut modifiers we're going to use here is alt. We just need the alt. Okay, so now we're into the class itself and I'm going to do some copy and pasting here because I'm a bit lazy and I don't want to type everything out. So first thing we do as normal is we use the static method create window to create the window we're interested in and we'll give it a title of quick selection window here. The next thing we want to do is we want to size and place our window. Because this is a dialog, it's going to come up very much like the Windows tab thing. I'm going to have the default pop up in the middle of the screen and I'm going to have the dialog size about a third of the screen. Now, in the scene view bookmarks tool, if you watch any videos around that, you'll notice that you can actually resize this particular dialog and move it elsewhere. And the next time you bring it up, this will be in the same size and position as you had previously. However, I'm not going to do that in this example, but just know all you need to do is when you close this window, save the size, save the position that it was in, and then re-bring that up next time. So where this is here, basically, you're just going to bring up what you saved in your editor preferences. Now, the next thing we want to do is we actually want to show the window, but I'm not going to use the standard show because this is a modal window, i.e. it sits in the front and you have to close it before you can edit anything else in your editor. I want to use the modal, but I also want it to look like a utility. So I'm going to use show modal utility as my option. Now I'm not going to use the actual bookmarks here for my content. I'm going to put in some fake content and I'm just going to copy and paste that here. But what I would do is if I was getting content from my scene, uh, for instance, the scene view bookmarks like I do at the moment, or let's say I wanted to have a selection that only selected the prefabs in my hierarchy or selected a certain prefab in my project view, then basically on enable is where I would do it. But for now, we're just going to create some content and stick a little text in there for fake and the index. So the next thing we want to do is we obviously want to draw the GUI. So we're going to do the on GUI function here that gets called in this editor window. And what we're going to do first is we're going to look at the input. We want to make sure that the user is still pressing the Alt button, and we want to know whether they keep pressing the G button to switch between the various pieces of content we want to select. So we'll come in here and we'll say, if the event dot current is not equal to null, then we're going to basically make sure that the modifier that we currently have 
is set to the event modifiers dot alt. And we'll make sure we use the equal there properly. Okay, so what am I doing here? What I'm basically saying is make sure there's an event happening and make sure that event includes the alt modifier. Because if it doesn't, then we've done our selection. We've walked through and we've made that selection that we're interested in. And you'll see that in action in a minute. So we're going to have an else statement there that's going to make our selection. But what is our selection? Well, let's get this out of the way now so we can continue on with our own GUI. Our selection method will basically say, give it an index. And in this case, what I'm doing is I'm just printing out the text of the content. What is written here, fake and the index. In the bookmarks case, what I do is I open a bookmark for the selected piece that you've actually done here. If you were doing a prefab selection in your hierarchy, you would basically change selection to dot active game object or game object or active object, basically to the object you wanted selected from the pieces here. And then I nicely close out the GUI because I don't need to do anything else. So what we want to do here is we actually want to make the selection if there is no current event or if the person has left holding the alt key. But we need to pass an index in here. So let's create an index that will keep throughout the time of this application. And we'll use int selection index here. And what we'll be doing is we'll be incrementing this with the G in a moment. But for now, we're just going to put it in here that says selection index, select that when we go through and we stop pressing. So let's look at the pressing, the extra G code. Well, again, I'm just going to copy and paste this here. And what we have here is we have, are you pressing the G code? The key code G, sorry, not the G code. And I'm also going to say, is the selection made? Now, why am I doing this? Well, the selection made, and let's just put the flag up the top. Here we go. So the selection made basically says, have I pressed the G code once? And it waits for the G code to be released before it does anything. And we're going to do the key up in a moment, because if you're constantly holding the G key, this is constantly processing. And what does that mean? Well, it means you'll just be cruising through every selection one after the other without actually pressing independent presses. So we basically put a flag in there to say only increment the selection if we are making a new of the G press. So what do we do? Well, we increment the selection index. And of course, we want to make sure it doesn't go over the end. So we say, OK, if you're passed or equal to the content length, then basically reset it and we'll start from beginning again. Now, the last thing we want to do here in this particular bit of code is we want to say repaint. Now, why do we want to do that? Well, the thing is, we're using a modal dialog. So this doesn't get the same update as it would do if we were doing a standard show, because we would basically have a void update method. And because of that, we want to manually do those repaints. And here we've made a new selection, so we want to do that manual repaint. That's just something to be aware of when you're typing this out. And the last thing to do is to say, OK, have we made a key up event? And if so, we know that's the G key and we're we're setting this flag to false so we know we can step onto the next one the next time we press the G key. OK, so that's the input mechanism all sorted. The next thing we want to do is we want to talk about the display. How are we going to display how these things particularly look? Well, we'll want to first set up a content style. Now, again, this will be very specific to the type of, to the type of use case you're actually using. And we're just going to set up a GUI style here called content style. Now, what do I mean by use case? Well, in the case of the scene view bookmarks tool, you'll notice that we actually have an image within the bookmark. That's the thumbnail. And we have a little bit of text, you know, top side view or whatever to tell the user what they're basically about to jump to within their scene as a bookmark. But in our case, we're not interested in any of that. We're just going to make a gooey looking button. And that's why we're using this default skin look of the button. And we're going to make it a nice height of 128128 because we're not just going to have nice little thin buttons. We want nice chunky buttons in these. And the next thing we want to do is we want to create our selection grid. So we'll come in here and we'll say GUI layout selection grid. We'll pass it the currently selected index. 
Then we'll pass it the content we're interested in. And then we want to tell it how many columns. Now, in the bookmarks tool, I actually assess the size of the width and height that I'm actually interested in. I look at the size of the window that I have, and I work out how many columns I would have that these would easily fit without them overlapping in the horizontal. I then have multiple rows going down, and you can actually scroll down them. And I wrap this all in a scroll view. But as we're doing it basically here, I'm just going to say, okay, well, I'm going to use as many as I need, because I know I'm only going to put five in there and I know how big my actual window is. So I'm just kind of cheating here. Okay, and I want to tell it what the style is. Now, as I say though, what you can do here is you can work out the size, work out the window size, and then specify all the math to basically create a column row system. You do that for your particular content style and I'll leave that to you. Okay, but we don't finish there. What if the user mouses over a selection in the grid and presses on one? We want to cater for that particular option because maybe they're gonna be super quick at jumping over and selecting what they want to jump to. So we'll say, give me the selection index. We'll then say, is the selection index not equal to the selection index we're currently storing? Then if it's not, then great. We'll just make our selection like that. So this is for a mouse over event where we're actually selecting from the selection grid. Now, another thing to bear in mind is with the final tool that I created, I store the selection index for the next time they open this window. And I check that selection index against how many selections are in the scene and all the rest of them over the scenes change because I want them to carry on from where they did last time. But obviously I'm doing a short example here, so I'm not gonna go into all that detail. So let's save that and go back into Unity. So let's see it in action. I hold down my Alt key and I press G and it opens up the quick selection window. I then press G again and again, and I move to each element of content. If I let go of Alt, then it prints out in the console window what I had selected. Just to show you again, there you go, there's another one. If I press Alt and I come into the window and I press down on one with my mouse, then I get that alternative selection. There it was, typing out fake four. Now, isn't that just the quickest selection in Unity? Let me know in the comments what you think of this and how you would use this pop-up window for yourself. And remember, you can get the Scene View Bookmarks tool in the Asset Store from the link in the description. And while you're there, you can pick up some other freebies I have listed as well. All purchases, of course, go to supporting this channel, so you get two benefits in one with each purchase. Now, if this video was a little too quick, maybe the next video on screen will be just the pace you wanted.